dear my summer carers. In this video we are going to assemble Satsuma step by step. Make sure you bookmark and share this video as in the end your Satsuma will be ready to pass the inspection and get its license plates. I prefer to assemble the Satsuma suspension first, so that the car is already on its wheels. But after one of the updates there are no wheels in our garage anymore, so we have to choose what to do. However, if you are just starting a new game, be sure to charge your old battery. But if the arrow points to the right, the battery is surely dead. You can choose from three options. Steal old wheels from the attic of an abandoned mansion. Find rims from the GT version of Satsuma and buy tires from a mechanic. Or order new rims from a catalog and come to the mechanic with them. Buying rims early in the game is not a good idea. It is much more important to buy new engine parts a little later. Well, or a ratchet set that will tighten the bolts faster and more precisely. To order an item from the catalog, first click on it and then on the confirmation sign. The letter that you have created needs to be dropped into the mailbox at the store. In 83 minutes the store owner will call you back and inform you that the parcel is ready to be taken and the order can be paid at his checkout. New rims can be ordered later, but now let's talk about cheaper options. You can find free wheels in the attic of an abandoned mansion. In order to pick them up, I definitely advise you to master a tractor. Bring food, beer and a Satsuma backseat with you from home in case you get fatigued. Grab the sledgehammer from the garage. Walk to the intersection with mailboxes and turn right towards the barn. Get into the tractor. Press Enter and first of all pull the hand throttle lever slightly towards you, then start the tractor. To the left of the seat release the handbrake and engage first gear. You can always change the key bindings in the game settings. If the gear doesn't change, you need to turn on the auto clutch in the car settings. Now carefully drive in reverse to attach the trailer. You just need to hit the middle of the tractor in the middle of the trailer. Let's go! In the tractor you can switch between high and low gears. Use this lever to drive the tractor faster. To do it easier you can assign your own key in a key binded menu. The mansion is located in the village of Lope, where the local mechanic lives. To get there turn left at the intersection after the railway. In general, there are two roads leading there, a circle asphalt road and a dirt road. On a dirt road, you can face your drunk cousin in a green fear. On the highway, you can meet the police checkpoint or have an accident with traffic. To learn the map, I would drive along the dirt road and turn left at the intersection. When you reach an auto repair shop with very noticeable muscle car, find a toilet nearby and save the game in it until dawn. Now you need to act quickly. Hop into the tractor and drive across the bridge until the first turn to the right. This is where that abandoned house is located. Take the sledgehammer on the F button and knock down the doors. If you are a dashing Wendell, then smash the doors with a tractor's fork. Clean the stairs up and look for the wheels. In order not to waste time, throw them out of the window. Why do you have to hurry? With every minute in the attic, we are getting closer to certain death. There is a osp nest under one of the beams, and if the osps wake up, they will bite you and you will die from an allergy. Osps are active from 8 am to 8 pm, therefore if you start at 4 am, you have 4 hours in reserve. If you want, you can start at 8 pm, but it gets dark quickly in Perayarve. It's inconvenient to mess around in the attic at night. Take the trophy home and I'll talk about a couple of pitfalls. 
When you assemble the car and drive it for inspection to get the license plates, the inspector will refuse to register the Satsuma. This happens if the tread on the tires is less than 50%. To check this percentage, there is a ruler in the toolbox. Just bring the ruler to an unscrewed wheel. Order new tires, you need to bring any rims or any wheels to a mechanic and order either standard tires or Gomer Gabra tires. Only these two types of tires can pass the inspection. The same should be done with the GT rims, which can be collected from the barn at this point. We will return to them in more detail when we convert the stock Satsuma to a GT version. In any case, I advise you to save money to buy new engine parts. Since we've got the wheels, let's continue with the assembly of the suspension. You continue to watch the ultimate guide how to assemble Satsuma. We already got the wheels for Satsuma, so it's time to assemble the suspension. Take the floor jack and raise the front of the car. Then attach the subframe with 4 bolts by 10. For a reference point, the part with the mounts for the steering rack should be at the back. Put the steering rack itself in these mounts and tighten 4 bolts by 9. It needs to be done on both sides of the Satsuma. Install the wishbone and fasten it with 2 bolts by 10. Put a spindle, tighten the barely visible bolt by 12 at the bottom. Next, attach two steering rods, we are not fixing them with anything yet. Let's put a strut, tighten three nuts by 10 on the top in the area of the support bearing. Four bolts by nine are located at the bottom from the back side. Check if you have tightened everything to the end. Then tighten the bolt by 12 at the junction of the steering rod with the steering knuckle. Put the disc brake assembly with the hub and tighten the bolt by 14. Install two front wheels and tighten four nuts by 13. Now let's set the toe in of the front wheels. That is, we will adjust their angle. Take an open end wrench by 14 and spin this nut in any direction until the wheel stops turning. Then scroll 60 times in the opposite direction. This should be done with both wheels. After that, the car won't be pulling to the side. The assembly of the front suspension is coming to an end and we will install the steering column. Tighten two bolts by 8 next to the steering rack. The bolts are hard to see there, be careful. Tighten the steering wheel with one nut by 10 and go to the rear suspension. Raise the rear part of the car and install the rear trail arm. On each side tighten two bolts by 12 at the base of the arm. Put two coil springs. Then install shock absorbers. Tighten two bottom bolts by 6 and one nut by 12 in the trunk. Put the drum brake and the hub and tighten one bolt by 14. 
install two remaining wheels, four nuts by 13. After you tighten the last nut, you assembled the suspension and did a great job. Since the car is already on its wheels, it makes sense to install the braking system. And since the engine does not interfere with the view, let's install the clutch master cylinder too. They have similar installation process. Let's start by installing the brake master cylinder and the clutch master cylinder. Tighten two bolts by eight on each. In the cabin, you need to fix the brake pedal and the clutch pedal with one bolt by nine. We turn to the installation of the brake lines and the clutch line. Using an open end wrench by 7, tighten the nuts at the brake cylinder. Then tighten the nut on the line that goes to the rear brakes. Go to the combination wheel and tighten 4 nuts by 7. This device distributes brake fluid to the wheels and warns driver if one of the brake circle is out of order. But in the game it only acts as a junction wheel. Tighten four remaining nuts for each wheel. The easiest way to do this is to drive the car on the garage pit. Press J to push the car. Be very careful not to let the car fall into the pit. Always remove the push mode when walking near the garage doors. Contrary to the front wheels, where nuts on the lines are visible, on the rear wheels nuts are hidden behind the suspension arms and are quite far from the wheel. You can see them neither from the pit nor from the arc of the wheel. After tightening the last four nuts, the main braking system is finished. Next, install the clutch line. Using the same range by 7, tighten one nut under the clutch cylinder. Now let's put the handbrake on. To do this, you need four bolts by eight. After that, go down into the pit and tighten one bolt by five. Well done, the braking system is installed. If in the future you experience problems with the brakes, there is another useful playlist, in which all the breakdowns of Satsuma are sorted out. The link is in the description too. Let's move on and assemble the engine. It will be as simple as previous steps. Today we finally got to the very heart of the car. We will assemble the engine. The worst mistake happens when you assemble an engine from spare parts that are already in the garage. Most of them are old and worn out, and the wear of the parts directly affects the engine. In fact, these parts will either break soon or have already broken. If something goes wrong, it will be very difficult for a beginner to distinct whether he messed up during assembly or the car stopped driving due to a breakdown. If such kind of situation occurred, you may find the second playlist about troubleshooting Satsuma in the description again. Do not miss it. To exclude unexpected problems, let's go to the mechanic for new parts. It is located in Lope, where we took the wheels. Compared in numbers, spare parts from the garage have from 15 to 50 percent of durability. Spare parts that mechanic sells have about 90 percent. When you come to the workshop, you will see them on the shelf. Parts only appear here if you detach them from the engine. Spare parts installed in a car cannot be purchased. That is why we are going here before building the engine. So, what are we going to buy? I would say that the most important thing is to buy parts that goes deeply inside the engine, so as not to rebuild it in the case of a breakdown. First of all, I recommend buying a crankshaft in pistons. A head gasket, a rocket shaft and a water pump are easier to change, but these are the most critical parts too. If you have money left, buy an alternator, a starter, a fuel pump and a clutch disc. There will be an amount about 5000 markers. The separate topic is a gearbox. Usually it runs for a long time, but if the budget allows, buy it too, because you will need to detach the engine in order to change the gearbox. This is not the most difficult procedure. A guide to this topic is in the playlist about troubleshooting Satsuma. In total, 6000 markers. All in all, having a car is expensive. However, the block and the oil pan can only be destroyed by an explosion. You do not need to buy new ones. 
there is a cheaper option for repairing the engine. To do this, you need to bring all these spare parts I spoke about to the workshop. In the catalog, order repair of broken engine parts for 2,900 markets. You need to pay attention to the couple of points when ordering repairs from a mechanic. First, in order to repair parts, they must be removed from the engine. Parts which are installed on the engine or on the Satsuma will remain broken. There are strange car mechanics in Finland. Second, it is better to leave spare parts inside the office, against the wall, so that you can reach them during non-working hours, when everything is ready. Third, repair will take from half an hour to two hours in real time, and this is a great reason to do something else on the map. Fourth, while the mechanic is working on the order, the catalog will not be visible on the desk during working hours. Fifth, as a result, the spare parts will remain the same old and worn appearance. It is okay, they are repaired and now have about 60-70% of durability. Always check the presence of the catalog before taking the parts home. Now we are going to the Tamas shop. The expenses do not end there, and you need to buy spark plugs, an alternator belt. Also, check if you bought oil, three cans of brake fluid, coolant and headlights. It's a good idea to fill the green cherry can with petrol. The lid can be opened with the F button. As soon as you have acquired parts and liquids, we begin to assemble the engine. The first step is to take the crankshaft and attach it to the block. It is attached with three main bearings. Each has two bolts by nine. Lay the block on its side and insert the pistons. Each is secured with two nuts by seven. Install the head gasket. Install the cylinder head and tighten it with 10 bolts by 7. Install the exhaust headers with 5 nuts by 8. And note that it has a special eyelet. What is it for? I prefer using the motor hoist. For this, there is a special mount on the exhaust headers. The second one is on the block. When you line up the chains with the mounts, two bolts by 10 will appear. After that, the engine can be assembled on the motor hoist. Pros don't need a hoist at all, and they install the engine by putting a crate of beer under it. Do you remember buying spark plugs in the shop? Take out them one by one from the box by pressing F. Install them in the engine, then take a special spark plug wrench and tighten each of them. Install the rocket shaft on the cylinder head, then tighten 5 bolts by 8. Then put the camshaft inside, tighten it with two bolts by five. Install the camshaft gear and tighten the bolt by 10. Now it is catastrophically important to pay attention that there is a mark on the gear itself. The same mark is located on the block. By turning the gear clockwise with the range, the marks must be aligned, otherwise at best the valves will bend, at worst the engine will explode. After you have accurately aligned the marks and checked three times, install the timing chain and then the timing cover. It is tightened with six bolts by six.
attach the water pump to the cover 5 bolts by 7. Be careful and tighten the nuts properly. Coolant may spill out and as a result the engine will overheat and explode. Put a pulley on top of the pump, tighten 4 bolts by 7. Next, install the crankshaft pulley. This is 1 bolt by 11. Now let's attach the alternator. Tighten the bolt by 7 on top and the nut by 10 from the back. Remove the tool and aim at the alternator. Use the mouse wheel to rotate the alternator to the left and install the belt. Then rotate the alternator to the extreme right position. After that, scroll back two times and tighten the bolt with a screwdriver. This is how the correct belt tension is set. Install the distributor with a screwdriver. In the next video I will pay special attention to adjusting the parts of the engine. Install the engine plate on the other side of the engine. Install the carburetor and tighten 4 bolts by 8. Later we will install the air filter. Driving without it, although it increases power, will lead to dirt getting inside the carburetor. As a result, the throttle on the car will jam and it will be very unpleasant. Put a flywheel on the crankshaft gear and tighten 6 bolts by 7. Let's assemble the clutch and install it on the engine. Tighten 6 bolts by 6. Place the oil pan below. Tighten the bolt by 13. Then tighten 8 bolts by 7 around the oil pan. Install a starter on the engine plate and tighten it with 2 bolts by 7. Install the inspection cover on the gearbox. Later it will be possible to change the clutch or flywheel through this window. Install the gearbox and tighten 6 bolts by 7 and 1 bolt by 10. Then we install the drive gear, tighten 6 bolts by 6 and 1 nut by 6 on the left. It secures the drive gear to the clutch release slave cylinder. Install a fuel pump in the front of the engine, 2 nuts by 7. Place the oil filter and tighten it by hand. Use the mouse wheel to screw it all the way down. Install the rocket cover 6 bolts by 7. Later, fill in oil through it, and then we will remove it again to adjust the valves. At last, install the air filter 2 bolts by 6. Roll up the hoist quietly to the Satsuma so as not to break the windshield by the engine. It breaks very quickly. Lower and align the engine with the subframe. As soon as the engine is approximately close to the mount, 3 bolts by 11 will appear on the subframe. Tighten them at the rear center and at front by sides. Now use a wrench by 10 to unscrew the engine from the hoist. Great job! The engine is assembled, but in order for the whole car to work, the engine must be connected to other car systems, and we will talk about this right now. Now we will connect the engine to the ignition coil, we will deal with the gearbox, cooling system, exhaust system, we will lay the fuel system to the engine and also completely assemble the exterior of the car. Let's start by installing the ignition coil. It is installed on the right side of Satsuma and is tightened with two bolts by eight. 
Slightly lower, in the far corner we will install the fuel filter, one bolt by eight, and then we will continue to install the fuel system. Let's install the gas tank and tighten 7 bolts by 11. It is curious that the father of the protagonist didn't have time to remove the fuel line from Satsuma, so it does not need to be installed, but you need to tighten a nut by 12 at the connection with the gas tank. We will install the fuel tank pipe without any bolts. Let's connect the clutch master cylinder to a drive gear. Using an open end wrench, tighten the nut by 7. The most important part is the connection of the coolant system to the engine. Let's start by installing the radiator, 4 bolts by 7. In order for Satsuma to work correctly, we will definitely connect the radiator to the electrics a little bit later. It's time to install the hoses between the radiator and the engine. The most important thing to know here is that after an update, clamps were added to the pipes. If they are not tightened, then coolant will quietly leak out and the engine will be destroyed. Take a screwdriver and tighten a total of 5 bolts. Then you can fill in coolant. In my summer car you can save money on it and piss inside the radiator. In Finland urine cools the engine better than coolant itself. Now let's start installing the exhaust system. The easiest way for me is to install the pipe not from the pit, but from the side of the car. It is easier to find the installation point this way. Tighten two bolts by seven at the junction with the exhaust headers. One bolt by seven is located on the pipe hanger under the bottom of the car. Next, we install the muffler itself, nothing hard. Tighten one bolt by seven. Now let's move on to the gearbox. A half shaft extends from it to each wheel. To put it on, first unscrew the hub nut by 14. At the same time, I still advise you to unscrew the wheel to avoid bugs. Tighten 3 bolts by 9 on the gearbox. And most importantly, do not forget to tighten the nut by 14 back. If the wheels cannot be removed or installed, jack up Satsuma so that the wheel is off the ground. Repeat all the actions with another wheel. Now let's go inside the car and install the gear stick. Tighten 3 bolts by 6. From the pit we will install a link between the gearbox and the gear shift lever. Tighten two bolts by five on the bottom and one nut by five on the top. Do not overlook it, otherwise gears will switch to neutral. Let's move on to the exterior and install the doors. To do this, put them and briefly press on the door handles. The doors will open. On the hinges, tighten four bolts by ten. Let's put the fenders on Satsuma, each of it has 5 bolts by 5. Install the boot lid, 4 bolts by 6. Front and rear bumpers are held by 2 bolts by 8. Tighten the radiator grill with two bolts by six. To install the hood, we need to install the dashboard first. Tighten it with two bolts by ten. 
it's a good moment to install the seats. Front seats are tightened with 4 bolts by 9. One of the bolts is hidden by a plastic cover, so you will have to find the right pixel. Rear seats are tightened with 2 bolts by 9 as well. Install the hood, 4 bolts by 6. Again, do not put the battery in Satsuma without the hood, it can be stolen at night. If everything worked out, you did a good job, but the fun is ahead. Ok, let's proceed to the next stage of assembling Satsuma. We will install the wiring. Get ready, it won't be difficult. Before the beginning of the works, I prepared a little and ordered antennas and all of the additional electrical equipment from the catalog. If you have watched the guide from the beginning, you know that the first step was to charge the old battery. If the arrow in the charger points to the right, the battery is dead and can be thrown away. If the arrow is to the left of the middle, the battery is well charged. Let's start installing wiring and first of all we will deal with the rear of the car. To connect one point to another with a wire, take a wiring mess in your hands. When you see a text with a check mark, press F. Then go to another point and press F again. First, let's connect the fuel tank to the rear harness connector. The connector on the fuel tank is hidden from view, so you have to find it. After that, the fuel gauge will start working when you connect the dashboard later. Install left and right tail lights. From this rear harness connector, connect two wires to the left and to the right rear lights. Let's continue with the wiring of the headlights. To do this, the headlights themselves must be removed. Find the headlight connector and install two wires to the left and right headlights. When you were in the shop, you had to buy two light bulbs, unbox bulbs and install them inside. Then put headlights back to their place and tighten them with two bolts by seven. Install the wire from the headlights connector to the main harness connector. Now from the main harness connector to the regulator. Connect the regulator to the alternator. If you forget to run this wire, the battery will not charge. Next, connect the main harness connector to the ignition coil. Run the wire from the main harness connector to the radiator fan connector. I really advise you to save the game now, as we are going to install the battery. Let me remind you again that if you leave a car with a battery without a hood overnight, the battery is very likely to be stolen. Always close the hood. Put the battery in place and take the wiring in your hands again. Run the wire from the main harness connector to the positive terminal on the battery. You will immediately see the terminal on the battery. Run a wire from the positive terminal of the battery to the starter. After that, take the wrench and tighten the nut by 5 on the starter. Now take a wrench by 7 and unscrew the nearest bolt on the starter. Connect the negative terminal to the starter, then screw the bolt back. Pay your attention, do not tighten the bolts on the battery now, this is not the end. Now go inside and run the wire from the ignition switch to the fuse box. Connect the radio harness to the radio itself, even though it is not there yet. If you haven't placed the dashboard, it's time to do it. Take the wrench by 10 and tighten two bolts. One of them is hidden inside the glove box. Let's continue with the dashboard meters. Inside it you can install either a clock from the shelf or a tachometer, which we will find when we convert the stock version of Satsuma to a GT1. Install the clock gauge and tighten two bolts by 7. Then fasten the entire dashboard with two bolts by six. Now let's learn some proctology, as we will lay the wires blind. Connect the fuse box to the instrument panel 1. The speedometer and other meters will start working. 
Run a wire from the fuse box to the instrument panel too. Install the wire from the dash harness connected to the light switch. Let's install a radio set. You don't need to tighten it. However, in order for the radio to play without noises, you need to order antennas from the catalog. Both are placed on the trunk and tightened with a bolt by 8. We have done with the basic electrics. Now, if you want more, let's talk about additional electric equipment. Remember, the battery must still be disconnected. Let's start with an installation of the gauge set that shows your battery condition, oil and water pressure. Run a wire from extra gauges to the dash harness connector. The next is the fuel mixture gauge, connected to the dash harness connector. It will help you to adjust your capurator precisely. Next, you can put fog lights on. Connect each marker light to the headlight connector. Tighten each with one bolt by six. The radar detector is located next to the repair shop behind the rusty truck. In order for it to work, you have to tighten it with a screwdriver. When approaching the police post, it makes a squeaking sound. In case police noticed it on the dashboard, you will be fined, so remove it before passing the checkpoint. In the future, you may want to change your car radio to a new, luxurious one. To do this, lean inside the dashboard and find the pixel responsible for detaching the radio and press the right mouse button. The radio will definitely stuck inside, so just pull it out and install the new one in a known manner. If you love deep sound as much as my downstairs neighbors, put the amplifier and two subwoofers. Tighten the amplifier with two bolts by five. Then run two wires. The first one is from the radio to the amplifier. The second one is from the radio harness to the amplifier power. To put the speakers, you need to place this podium behind the back seat. It can be spray painted in any color. Put subwoofers in it. For some strange reason, we install the right speaker to the left and the left one to the right. Then run two wires to the speakers from the amplifier. You may also want to install a racing tachometer. It doesn't need wiring, but it must be secured with a bolt by five. To adjust it, you need to maintain the refs and turn the adjustment knob with the mouse scroller. It will tell you when to upshift in races and at the same time it will block half of the dashboard. And now the solemn moment comes when we connect the battery. Take the wrench by 8 and tighten first, positive terminal, and only then the negative one. If you confuse the order, at best Satsuma will light up, at worst you will be electrocuted. If you did everything correctly, the ignition and all onboard electrics will work after you turn the key. Now, the Satsuma is completed and ready for its first start and then for its engine tuning. For a majority of players, the first start will not cause problems if the car was assembled with new spare parts. The malfunctions that each worn-out part brings can really ruin your life. Several worn parts may have several different symptoms, which make diagnostics harder. A playlist about various breakdowns is in the description as well. Before the first start, check whether you have poured all the fluids, motor oil, coolant, three bottles of brake fluid in each of three cylinders.
I always forget to fill up the gas tank. Jerry can leads can be opened by pressing the F button. One more thing. The phone may start ringing at the most unsuitable moment, distracting you from tuning the car properly. For a bit of convenience, you can temporarily remove the hood. Get inside and turn over the engine. If you followed the previous gags and done everything correctly, Satsuma will start as it should and will hold the idle RPM. Pull out the choke to warm up the engine faster. Even if it seems that the car is driving fine at first, this is a deceptive feeling. It still needs to be adjusted. Copyright distributor and valves get random values after creating a new save. That's why we need to configure them. If in the few first seconds you hear heavy knocks coming from the engine, like the knocks of a hammer, immediately turn off the engine. You will have to disassemble it because you have not aligned the timing marks. If you don't turn the engine off quick enough, it will break. Let's start with the most important thing – adjusting the valves. To do this, take a wrench by 7 and with the running engine remove the valve cover. Then take a screwdriver. In short, there are two ways to adjust the valves. The first way to do it is to tune it by ear. Each valve needs to be scrolled down until you hear a clicking metallic sound. We may use the second method in case you have already ruined the engine tuning or the car stalls every time. In this method we reset each boat so that all valves take the same value and then scroll each of them in the opposite direction a certain number of times. To reset, scroll down each boat 25 times. In the newest versions of the game, boats stop turning when they reach their limits. When it happens, scroll them up 7 times. Doing this you'll get the most powerful setting, but if your mouse scroller is not very accurate, like mine, I would recommend scrolling back a little bit more, like 9 times, and then use the first method to adjust valves by ear. In this case you will get 100% result. What did we just do? By scrolling the bolts down, we make the valve looser, which allows it to move faster and let the fuel mixture pass into the combustion chamber or release the exhaust gases faster, depending on whether it is an intake valve or an exhaust valve. Factory setting is a bit different as it aims to save fuel at expense of the performance. In this case, the exhaust valves are tighter, but let's be honest, show me at least one Satsuma driver who actually saves fuel. What an inglorious waste of life. We have adjusted the valves, but the car still accelerates poorly. It's time to adjust the ignition. That's what the distributor is for. This is a device thanks to which a spark is applied to the right spark plug at the right time. Take the screwdriver again and slightly unscrew the locking bolt. Then turn the distributor clockwise with your bare hands until you hear a ringing sound similar to an old school bell. Turn the distributor one scroll back and tighten the locking bolt. To adjust it using scrolls, turn the distributor clockwise until it stops spinning and then counterclockwise by 26 scrolls. 
In fact, there are not so many things to adjust in Satsuma and the last one will be the carburetor tuning, which means setting the air-fuel mixture. This mixture enters the combustion chamber and ignites when the piston compresses it. In its turn, gases from burning expands and pushes the piston back. This process in general makes the engine work. The carburetor is tuned only on a warmed-up engine and without using the choke. Attention! Before tuning, make sure the choke is off and the car is warm. To simplify the carburetor setup, you can buy a special fuel mixture sensor from the catalog. It's called an AFR gauge. At the same time, you need to connect it to the dashboard connector to make it work. When wiring, always unscrew the negative terminal from the battery, otherwise you may be electrocuted. To pass the inspection and get the license plates, the fuel mixture must be set to the factory ratio of 14.7. This means 14.7 parts of air per one part of gasoline. This ratio is set at factories for all gas-powered cars, since it provides maximum power along with the full combustion of fuel. Scrolling up makes the mixture leaner, while the numbers on the gauge get higher. Scrolling down makes the mixture richer and the numbers lower. The maximum power is achieved by using a richer mixture, with the ratio of 12.6. In this case, the remains of unburned fuel go straight into the exhaust pipe and pollute the finished environment, which pisses off Inspector Lindell. The carburetor can be easily adjusted without the gauge as well. While tuning it, pay attention to a couple of signs. The first one is the color of smoke that is coming from the muffler. If it is black, then there is too much gasoline in the mixture and its unburned particles flies out. To make the fuel mixture leaner, scroll the bolt on the carburetor up. If you hear loud bends when pressing on the throttle, the fuel mixture is too lean and you need to scroll the carburetor bolt down. It's always easier to see black smoke and make the mixture leaner step by step until the exhaust fumes become barely visible. That is the factory value 14.7. If the exhaust fumes become white, it is difficult to determine the quality of the mixture. But a tachometer will help you. You can either buy it in the catalog or find it in the dirt tray. If your RPM is idling closer to 600, the mixture is rich. Scroll the bolt up. If the RPM is closer to 1000, scroll it down. Once again, the carburetor is tuned only on a warmed-up car without a choke. To increase Satsuma's power with the stock carburetor, some remove the air filter. Indeed, the car becomes more powerful until the dirt clogs up the throttle, so it's stuck in the open position. And the car will accelerate until you crash into the nearest tree. If you want to, the stock carburetor can be repaired by the mechanic, but it will be much, much smarter to order a twin carburetor from the catalog. It is weaker than the racing one, but it passes the inspection and is much easier to tune. By the way, there is an up-to-date video about the inspection and getting license plates on my channel. That will be the next step of assembly of the Satsuma. Show your Satsuma to the world. Record yourself driving your Satsuma, provide it with your nickname, save files, upload it on Google Drive or something like this. Send me a link by email. I will pick the most interesting Satsuma's builds and make a top of the best and the worst ones, so you can rate them. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. My name is Don. Take a Satsuma to the inspection and stay well.